This is a talk about Music 2, simple two-round Schnorr multi-signatures. I am Jonas Nick, and this work is a collaboration with my colleague Tim Ruffing at Blockstream and with Yannick Serin from ANSI. Multi-signatures allow N signers to produce a single signature on a single message. The signing protocol can be interactive and require multiple communication rounds. We distinguish between multi-signatures, where n of n signers can produce a signature, and threshold signatures, where any subset of size t out of n signers can produce a signature. This work covers only multi-signatures. Our interest in Schnorr multi-signatures mainly stems from its potential applications to Bitcoin. Bitcoin allows setting up policies that require multiple parties to cooperate and create signatures to spend a coin. This is commonly referred to as multi-sig policy in Bitcoin. It can be used simply to store Bitcoin on multiple devices to achieve a higher level of security. Moreover, many advanced off-chain protocols, which are also called smart contracts, require a multi-sig policy, for example, the Lightning Payment Network and federated sidechains. It is trivial to construct multi-signatures from standard signatures. Just concatenate individual public keys and individual signatures. This is possible in Bitcoin today using ECDSA. But for N signers, this requires O of N space and verification time. This is particularly bad in blockchain systems where storage is very expensive and all nodes need to verify all signatures on the blockchain. The Bitcoin network will support Schnorr signatures soon. The Schnorr signature specification called Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 340 is part of the ongoing Taproot software and has been locked in for activation in November. There are a few reasons to prefer Schnorr signatures over ECDSA. Provable security, efficiency, and most importantly for this work, Schnorr signatures allow easier construction of advanced signing protocols. The vision is to have a layered design. On the on-chain layer, we'll just have support for Schnorr signature verification. That means nodes in the Bitcoin network will be able to verify ordinary Schnorr signatures, and this is part of the consensus rules. This simple functionality enables us to deploy advanced signing protocols in an off-chain manner without the need to change the consensus code every time. For example, we can build multi-signatures on top as we do in this work, but we can also build threshold signatures, blind signatures, and possibly other advanced signing protocols. As long as the output of the signing protocol looks like an ordinary Schnorr signature, it will be understood by the nodes on the network. This design has multiple advantages. First of all, the on-chain consensus layer is kept simple and the complexity is moved to off-chain protocols. What ends up on-chain is just an ordinary Schnorr public key and signature. This is great for privacy because just by looking at the chain, an observer cannot tell that a complex protocol is in fact going on in the background. And moreover, this approach is efficient and the on-chain data is very compact. To make this vision reality, we need a multi-signature scheme that is compatible with ordinary Schnorr signature verification. The first challenge here is that we need an interactive signing protocol that enables N signers to produce an ordinary Schnorr signature. The second challenge is that we want a non-interactive key aggregation algorithm, so everyone should be able to combine a multi-set of public keys into a single aggregate key. We call a scheme with these two properties a fully compatible Schnorr multi-signature scheme. If we look at existing schemes in the literature, one nice scheme with this property is MUSIC, which we're going to call MUSIC1 to distinguish it clearly from our work here. MUSIC1 works in the plain public key model. Other multi-signature schemes typically require proofs of possession in their public keys to avoid rogue key attacks. So usually signers need to prove in zero knowledge that they really know the secret key corresponding to their public key. The novelty of MUSIC1 is to avoid this. But the main drawback of MUSIC1 is that signing requires three rounds of communication. 
We recently worked on another variant of music called Music DN. The N here stands for deterministic nonsense. The primary goal of this work was not to obtain a two round scheme, but to achieve a deterministic signing protocol. The background is that discrete logarithm based signature schemes usually need a random nonce. In single signer signatures, the nonce is in practice derived deterministically from the secret key and the message in order to avoid catastrophic failures in real world random number generators, for example, repeating randomness. If you reuse randomness as a signer, then everyone can extract your secret key. Interestingly, you can do this deterministic ver derivation easily in multi signature schemes. You cannot. In fact, if you apply the same techniques to multi-signatures naively, the security of the resulting scheme breaks down entirely. One way to fix this problem is to use a large enough hammer and add an expensive zero-knowledge proof to the signing protocol. And as a nice side effect, one can obtain a two-round signing scheme. But due to the complexity of the zero-knowledge proof, this protocol is not at all simple and it's currently infeasible to use on dedicated signing devices, such as hardware wallets, as commonly used for storing bitcoins. It's insightful to look at previous attempts to construct, a, construct two round schemes secure under concurrent sessions. That is, when the attacker can open multiple signing sessions with the victim concurrently. An early revision of the Music One paper in fact was a two round scheme, but Drivers et al. discovered a flaw in the security proof, which we will discuss later in this talk. Not only did they show that the proof was flawed, but they also gave a super polynomial but practical attack against the scheme, and they gave a meta reduction that rules out a security proof against polynomial adversaries. In response, a third communication round was added to Music One before it was published in DCC 2019. At Eurocrypt 2021, a better attack was found that not only requires polynomial running time. In fact, the attack is efficient enough so that you can probably perform it on your po pocket calculator. Surprisingly, the exact issue was, that was overlooked in the flawed Music One proof was already identified and described by Nicolosi et al. 15 years earlier in their work on two-party signatures. In fact, Nicolosi et al. had to limit the number of concurrent sessions supported by their scheme in order to sidestep the issue and obtain a valid security proof. But apparently, neither the Music One authors nor Drivers et al. were aware of this work, and also, we learned about the work only when Dodis brought it to our attention after we presented a preliminary version of Music 2 at Real World Crypto earlier this year. We will now continue by warming up our memory of Schnorr signatures and examine Music 1 and why it's a three round protocol. Then we move our focus to Music 2 and explain how to properly get rid of the communication round that had been added in Music 1. We'll obtain a simple two round protocol and we will explain why in some situations it's even more efficient than two rounds. Before we get to multi-signature, let us quickly go over the definition of Schnorr signatures. We have a secret key X and a public key that is G to the power of X, where G is the generator of a group in which we assume the discrete logarithm is hard. Note that we are using multiplicative notation for the group operations. In order to sign a message M with a secret key, we draw a fresh scalar R and compute a commitment capital R equal to G to the power of R. Capital R is typically called the nonce. Then we obtain a Fiat Shamir style challenge by hashing the public key, the nonce and the message. We compute S as the secret key times the challenge plus R and return capital R and S. In order to verify a signature, RS of a message M, for a public key, we first compute the challenge hash and then use group operations to verify that the S value was computed correctly. Now let's look at music one. 
Schnorr multi-signatures with key aggregation. Conceptually, it's straightforward to construct correct but insecure multi-signatures from what we've already seen about Schnorr signatures. Assume for simplicity that we only have two signers, each with a secret and a public key. We can multiply the public keys to create an aggregate public key, and similarly, we can multiply the nonces. It's easy to check that if the signers create partial signatures S1 and S2 for the same message, then the sum S of the partial signatures and the product R of nonces is a valid Schnorr signature for the aggregate public key. This scheme is insecure for two reasons. The first reason is that it's vulnerable to key attacks, in which the attacker chooses his public key depending on the public key of the victim signer in order to cancel out the public key of the victim signer. Rogue key attack. The common defense against rogue key attacks is to add a proof of possession to each public key that is a zero knowledge public zero knowledge proof of knowledge that shows that the owner of the public key knows the corresponding secret key. The contribution of music one was to avoid the need for proofs of possession. Instead, the individual public keys are not just multiplied, but there are additional exponents that are derived via a hash function. To create key aggregation exponent AI, we hash the ith key together with a multiset of all keys. The second essential improvement over the insecure Stroman scheme is that MUSIC1 has a third round, which runs before the other two rounds. In that round, everyone sends a hash-based commitment to their nonce before they reveal their nonce in the second round. The main purpose of MUSIC2 is to get rid of this round. So why can't we just drop the commitment round? If we drop the commitment round, we, we will arrive at the flawed two-round scheme in the early revision of MUSIC1. So the simple answer to this question is that when we drop the round, then there will be known attacks. Namely, I mentioned the attacks by Drivers et al. and by Ben Hamuda et al. But it is insightful to look at why the security proof was flawed. The Security proof of the flawed MUSIC1 scheme is based on the one more discrete logarithm problem. It is a natural generalization of the discrete logarithm problem. First, the adversary gets k discrete logarithm challenges from the challenger who is then able to ask for k-1 discrete logarithm oracle queries. The adversary wins if it computes the discrete logarithm of all k challenges. One can see that the ordinary discrete logarithm corresponds to OMDL with k equal to 1. OMDL has been used for other interactive variants of Schnorr signatures, for example blind signatures. OMDL is useful in security proofs because it lets the reduction borrow DL oracle queries during runtime and only needs to solve challenges in the end. As a side note, in the MUSIC2 paper, we in fact don't use the OMDL assumption, but instead the weaker algebraic OMDL or AOMDL assumption. We're the first to describe this assum assumption, which is immediately implied by the OMDL assumption. In contrast to OMDL, the benefit of AOMDL is that it's a falsifiable assumption. A quick look at the existing literature reveals that essentially all positive security results that are based on OMDL can be based on the weaker AOMDL. In the remainder of the talk, we'll ignore AOMDL and stick to the well-known but stronger OMDL assumption for simplicity. But if you're interested in the details of AOMDL, or if you're planning to use the OMDL assumption in the future, we recommend you have a look at our paper. Here's an outline of a proof that attempts to prove the flawed MUSIC1 scheme secure under the OMDL assumption in the random oracle model. Given a successful forger A, there is a reduction B against OMDL, which first gets a DL challenge U and sets public key X1 equal to U. 
Then B runs forger A on public key X1. Somehow B simulates the honest signer without the secret key, where the secret key is equal to the discrete logarithm of the challenge. And somehow B needs to fork the execution of the forger A to obtain the secret key from the forgery. Finally, B outputs the secret key, which is also the solution of the first DL challenge U. And the forking lemma will take care of the details and the probabilities. At this high level of, of abstraction, there is only a single DL challenge and this outline looks like a normal reduction to DL. OMDL will come into play only when simulating the honest signer. For this step, the reduction B will obtain additional DL challenges. For each additional DL challenge, the reduction gets one DL oracle query for free, as long as it's able to solve all additional challenges. So in order to solve the OMDL problem, the reduction needs to make sure that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between DL challenges and DL oracle queries during the simulation. Then the first DL challenge U is exactly the one more challenge that the reduction will solve. We will now see how the reduction can simulate signing without the secret key in the OMDL setting. On the right side, we have the insecure music one scheme. The reduction plays signer one, the forger is signer two. For every signing query, the reduction gets a fresh DL challenge R1 and sends it as nonce to the forger. Then in order to sign without the secret key X1, the reduction makes use of the DL oracle. It computes partial signature S1 by querying the DL oracle with X to the power of aggregation exponent A times signature challenge C multiplied by R1. In the end, the reduction learns the secret key X1 and can solve the signature equation S1 equal to X1 times C plus R1 for the DL challenge R1. To understand what can go wrong here, we focus on the signature challenge C. The forger can choose R2 after having seen R1 and is therefore able to bias the hash C. We will see why this is a problem on the next slide. This would not be possible with the initial nonce commitment round in the secure music one scheme. What we want is that for a DL challenge R1, the reduction makes a single DL query to obtain S1. However, if the forger is forked after seeing R1 and before sending its own nonce R2, it can send a different R2, which results in a different signature challenge C prime in the upper execution. This means that for a single DL challenge, the reduction has to make two DL, DL oracle queries in order to simulate signing, which ultimately prevents the reduction from winning the OMDL game. Since both music one and music two support key aggregation without proofs of possession, it is not sufficient to fork the execution of the forger only once. Instead, the forking lemma is applied twice. First to the random oracle queries for the key aggregation exponent and then to the queries for the signature challenge. This results in four execution of the attacker and in the worst case, the reduction may need even four DL queries for a single DL challenge. We will now see how MUSIC2 fixes this. How can we fix this? Remember that we obtain one DL query per DL challenge and remember that the DL challenge is used as nonce. So the simple answer is that the signer uses four nonces. Instead of sending just a single nonce, every signer i sends four nonces, ri prime, ri prime prime, and so on. And effectively uses a random linear combination, ri equal to ri prime times ri2 prime to the b times ri3 prime to the b square times ri4 prime to the b cube. The exponent b is set by hashing what is essentially, essentially the entire protocol input and transcript after the nonce exchange round. That is, the aggregate public key, the message, and the nonces of all signers. Note that we don't simply concatenate all nonces, but instead we multiply them. This is just a minor tweak that can be ignored for the purpose of this talk. 
The randomness in B will ensure that the resulting linear combination is different in each of the executions and thus the reduction obtains a linear independent equation system that it can solve for the DLs in of all four involved DL challenges. The simple idea is the main insight of our proof, but we note that very careful programming of the involved random oracles is necessary to obtain a full rigorous security proof. For obvious reasons, we can't show the full proof here in the talk, but refer to you, refer you to the paper instead. We promised a simple scheme, but now we require four nonces per signer. The number four corresponds to the four executions of the forger. So the question arises if that is only an artifact of the proof technique. The answer is yes, most likely, since only two nonces are needed for music two in the algebraic group model. We don't go into detail about the AGM proof because it's very mechanical and tedious. Luckily, Alper and Burgess independently developed a proof in the AGM of an almost identical multi-signature multi scheme that confirms our results. We summarize the security results for a given number of nonces in the following table. With a single nonce, we know a practical attack. Music 2 with four or more nonces can be proven secure under AOMDL in the ROM. With two nonces, it is secure under AOMDL in the ROM when we additionally assume the algebraic group model. This result is shared with a concurrent work titled Two Round Trip Schnorr Multisignatures via Delinearized Witnesses by Alper and Burgess, which appears at the very same conference as this work. We finally have a look at the scheme that was developed in this work, MUSIC2. It differs from the early flawed variant of MUSIC1 by letting each signer generate two and send two nonces instead of one. So this is the, secure, the variant secure in the AGM. Each signer's effective nonce RI is a random linear combination of its two nonces with random exponent B. This exponent is the hash of the aggregate public key the message, the product of all signers' first nonces, and the product of all signers' second nonces. Each signer then creates a partial signature using their effective nonce. Why do we so much bother with a distinction between two and three rounds if the scheme is interactive anyway? The answer is that it is not only the number of rounds that matter in practice. The first round of music 2 can be securely performed without knowing the message M. This makes signing effectively non-interactive. At any time that is convenient to the signers, the nonces can be pre-shared by executing the first communication round. For example, the two ends of a payment channel can pre-share nonces when the connection is established. Then when a message to sign arrives, for example, a payment to forward, signing is just a single message on the wire. This is a novelty in a DL setting without pairings, and it's probably the best round efficiency you achieve without pairings. To recap, the key technical idea of our work is that every signer uses a random linear combination of multiple nonces instead of a single nonce. A remarkable fact is that this idea appeared concurrently in three works. And it's great to see that the idea has been independently confirmed. We already mentioned the work by Alper and Burgess. In addition, the Frost scheme by Komlo and Goldberg uses the very same idea in the threshold setting instead of the multi-signature setting. All three results differ in the details of their schemes and provable security guarantees, but a detailed comparison is out of scope for this talk. With MUSIC2, multi-signatures look like ordinary Schnorr signatures, which are compact and allow for fast verification. MUSIC2 is a practical and simple two-round signing protocol. The first round can be pre-computed without knowing the message M, so signing is almost non-interactive. MUSIC2 has concur concurrent security under AOMDL in ROM for two nonces or ROM plus AGM for four nonces. If you want to learn more about MUSIC2, then have a look at our paper on ePrint.